Good morning, everyone. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. I love Sundays because this is what we're saying. This is the first day of the week, and I'm restarting my week with God. I really, really believe that we need to intentionally take time to put God first. This is one of, one of the ways we do it, is by time. There's a lot of priorities in life. There are a lot of things that we can do. And we could say, man, I love God. But if you love someone or you love something, you take time and you invest in it. Some people love golf. You find a way to golf. right? Or whatever you like to do, you find time for that. And the areas that you're investing in, time and effort, you become better in, more skilled in. And it's the same thing with God. I love the first day of the week. That we have an opportunity to reset our week and say this week is going to be about God. How many understand that? When you put this, this is a time. Proud of you. We, we have to stop being people that are expecting great things and we're hoping for great things. And we're just hoping things turn out well. But I've learned that life is more than hope and wishes and dreams and luck. Um, life is about decisions you make. And if you want a better life, you have to start making better decisions. I'm going to get that. There's a skill to this. There's a discipline to this. And that's why God has given us his word. There's, there was a time where Jesus said this. I've given you the, this word. I've given you these, these statements. or I'm say, giving you these sayings though, so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. He says, I'm giving you instructions how to live a full life. I love that. I want to learn how to live a full life and overflow, well, not with anger and depression, but with some joy. Does anybody need some joy? This is good. Let's start agreeing with God, putting God first. Things will begin to change as you prioritize your life. And this is one of the things every week. Bring your family to God's house. This is what we do. We had a bad Saturday night. Who cares how Saturday night went? We're going to start over. That was, the last day, last, that was the last day of last week. We're starting over today. We're going to have a great week. Let's give the Lord a hand that he gives us a Sunday to worship him in and put in God. So um, we're, we're learning. We're learning how to do relationships. We're learning how to love. And life is all about love. And, and the subject I'm going to be talking about today, life is all about love. And I'll even say this, life is all about forgiveness. If we do not learn how to forgive, it's all over. You'll never have healthy relationships because there's people around you all over the place that are very offensive. And, and understand this, there are times that you're the offender, right? And, and if you don't learn how to forgive people, um, if you need everybody to be perfect around you for you to be happy, you're never going to be happy. There has to be a time that you realize, I'm not going to reflect your attitude. I'm going to make a choice to forgive you, let you go, so I can move on with my life and have a healthy life, healthy relationships. Come on, have healthy ministry. We have to learn how to forgive. And if you can learn this skill about forgiveness, you can really grow spiritually. Your relationships will be great uh, and you, because we're a byproduct of how we process um, people and offenses and bad behavior. And if you're really good at processing through that and forgiving people, you'll always be in a good place. Your relationships will be healthy and you will always be a bridge to Jesus. But if we are angry or we're upset, there's no bridge to Jesus. One of the, one of the strategies of war is blow up the bridges. And the enemy wants to blow you up so you're not a bridge to people coming to know Jesus. And he blows you up when you get upset, when you grab on the unforgiveness, you become bitter, and you start cussing everybody out. I'm not saying you're not a Christian, but you're not an effective bridge. How many want to become an effective bridge to, to, to Jesus, to hope, to salvation? Let's pray. We're going to learn about forgiveness today. Father, we just thank you. I thank for everyone that's here. Thank you for the opportunities all around us. Even Leadership University at 1.30, that we're going to get an opportunity for those that want to go next level. They're going to be able to sign up today. Even though they might be scared to go next level, they're going to sign up, join. And those are opportunities. May we not overlook these opportunities because it could change the trajectory of our lives forever. We thank you, Lord, that this moment, this teaching, if we learn it, Father, and it's a seed that's planted in our lives. Our lives can be changed forever. Our families, our marriages, our dynamics at the workplace, our emotions, all can change 
dependent on how we respond to this word. Let us not just be hearers of the word. That, that was great, but we'll be doers of the word. That's definitely greater. So we just thank you, Lord. We praise you. Holy Spirit, give us understanding and conviction. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So glad you're here. Awesome. Today, we're going to dive into this title and this subject is love and forgiveness is a choice. Say with me, is a choice. We cannot reach people for Jesus if our love for one another has been conquered by unforgiveness and disunity. Our ministry will be as effective and powerful as the love we have for each other. Our spiritual health is reflected by how well we love our brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in the church. That means you cannot be saying, man, I love God, but I can't stand my brothers and sisters in the church. It's time to take an inventory of our relationships in the body of Christ and update, update them by making a choice to love and forgive everyone that we feel has hurt us and restore our relationships with them. I said, even if someone, if you feel someone's hurt you, you got to update those relationships. God is concerned about your relationships in your church. How many get that? We can't be effective in reaching them and we can't even forgive each other. We are in a fight of faith and our faith is tied to Jesus' command that we love one another. It is only through our love that we have for one another, that the world will know that we are truly disciples of Jesus Christ. God has chosen to display his glory, reveal himself to the world by his word and the love that we have for each other. I'm going to read a scripture. God has chosen to display himself to the world. What he's saying, I'm displaying myself to unbelievers. I want to show them I'm real. And how I'm choosing to show the world, unbelievers, that I'm real is how you love one another. If you don't love one another, it's going to really reveal to them that God doesn't exist. The only way they're going to know that God exists, they're going to see love in action. Before we can love them, we need to love one another. And you might be saying church life at times is challenging. Of course it's challenging because that's where the war happens. If he somehow gets us divided, fighting with one another, giving up on each other, this is the truth. We've already been conquered. Let's read this scripture in John 13, 34 and 35. Jesus is now teaching. And he says this, I'm giving you a new commandment. When Jesus teaches, he doesn't teach and say, I'm giving you a new suggestion. But it's a commandment. That means when he gives us a commandment, either we do it or we don't. And if we don't do it, we are sinning. And if we are sinning, this is what it'll end up with. It'll end up in disaster, destruction, misery, pain, emotional distress. That's how it works. Sin always leads to death. Sin always leads to misery. Sin always leads to loss. Sin always leads to failure. And sin always leads to destroyed relationships. I'm giving you a new commandment, and this is a commandment, that you love one another. God commands us to love one another. We owe each other one thing, and that's love. Now, we love one another at all times. I just don't love you when you treat me right. That's not love. Love is a commitment. Love is not a feeling. We're going to learn a lot about love and forgiveness today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do two sessions on forgiveness. Session number one is today. Next week, session number two. And you know what that means? You need to bring somebody next week to hear session number two. It's going to be amazing. Now, that you love one another, look at this. 
just as I have loved you. Jesus is now saying, I want you to love one another, not how your mama loved you, not how your daddy loved you, not how your neighbor loved you, not how your sister loved you. The standard of love I want you to use is my love for you. I want you to love each other the same way I love you. And when I think about that, is there anybody that God doesn't love? If there's not a person that God doesn't love, there shouldn't be a person that you don't love. Remember, love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. Love is a commitment. Jesus goes on and says, we read, we're not going to read that today, but he goes on to say, love even your enemies. Never get to the point that you hate someone and wish the worst upon them. God never wishes the worst upon you. He always still, while we're, while we're in sin, rejecting him, hurting him, he's still reaching out to us because he loves us. And this is what Jesus is saying. I want to reach them the way I reach you. Will you allow me to love them through you? And I'm not going to ask you to do something I didn't do for you first. Just as I've loved you, so you too are to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love and unselfish concern for one another. The only way that the world will know that we are truly disciples of Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, is our love and unselfish concern for each other. That's powerful. That there's a way to show this world God. There's one way to show this world Jesus Christ. There's one way to show this world that we're followers of Jesus Christ. It's not just by what we say, it's our love for each other. That means that you could know the Bible inside out and maybe, and no one see Jesus. Knowing the word and not loving people makes your knowledge of no effect. Why well, go to the way we're allowed reach? It's good to go to the way we're allowed reach, but be careful that you're saying you go to the way we're allowed reach and you don't like the people in your own home. And you're telling them, come, I follow Jesus. They go, wow, I don't want to follow your Jesus. I mean, he's a hater. I mean, he cuts people's tires when he gets angry and breaks windows. All right? Look at this. So they'll know. Now, the purpose of this message today is to learn one of the most important skills and commands in the word of God. And that is to forgive one another so that we can continue to love one another. I'll say this. We forgive one another so we can continue to love one another. I'll even say it another way. We forgive one another because we love each other and we forgive each other so that we can continue to love one another. It's a circle. So I forgive you because I love you. And because I love you, I forgive you. It's to continue loving one another. The moment I, I choose not to forgive you is also choosing not to love you. Let's look at Jesus. Jesus chose to love and forgive us, so we must choose to love and forgive each other. I said again. Jesus chose to love and forgive us, so we must choose to love and forgive each other. If Jesus could forgive us, then we should just go ahead and pass on what he's given us to somebody else. Now, let's look at Jesus' life here in this portion of Scripture. Luke 23, 33, it says, when they came, this is, this is, this is the moment that Jesus is, is suffering and dying, not for his sins, but for our sins. And we're going to see how Jesus chose to love and forgive us. When they came to a place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. All that means is they intentionally hurt him. What, what does that mean? There's people that didn't accidentally offend you. 
they intentionally are out to get you. There's people trying to nail you, hurt you, persecute you, talk about you. And if you fail, they celebrate it. Hmm. How can I love those people? Jesus did. And the criminals were also crucified. Now, Jesus was not a criminal, but he was crucified with the criminals. One on his right and one on his left. Look at verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Jesus' response after they intentionally hurt them was to forgive them. We're going to go deeper into that. And he says they don't know what they are doing. Why did Jesus say they don't know what they are doing? This, he's saying this because people that are hurting you many times don't even know why they're doing it. They don't know what they're doing. Many, this is what happens. People are hurting and, and, and their mom abused them and now they're abusing you. They don't even know what they're doing. They're just carrying on their hurt. And what Jesus was saying, they don't even know what they're doing, why they're crucifying me, why they're mocking me, why they're hurting me. They don't know the condition that they're really in. In order to be good at forgiveness, we're going to have to be more understanding of others. You guys got that? Look what, the, look what happened. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. So Jesus, they nail him to the cross, and then you got some some soldiers throwing dice, I don't know what they're doing, for his clothes. You know what that means? Is they were unaware, unappreciative, and dishonoring him. And while they were unaware, unappreciative, and dishonoring him, what is he doing? Loving them and forgiving them. I want you to see this because Jesus is telling us, love and forgive the way I love and forgive. Has anybody hurt you at this level? Crucified you to a cross, and while you're on the cross, they're throwing dice for your jacket, for your hat, dishonoring you. You're dying and suffering, shedding your blood, and they're laughing and playing around you. Not acknowledging all the pain that they've caused you. Is there someone in your life today that have caused you major pain and they're just laughing? They don't even have a clue what they've done to you. And you're waiting for them to finally recognize. Do you recognize how much you hurt me? And you're still hurting me? And you're laughing and you're playing and you're having a great old time at my expense and you expect me to love and forgive you? I don't think so. But that's not how Jesus loved us. We're going to help you get set free from all these people that hurt you. So you can move on and enjoy your life. Because when you learn to love like Christ and forgive like Christ, you'll learn how to live like Christ. Walk in the power of Christ. Walk in the mirror. Come on. Walk in the joy of Christ. The peace of Christ. And no matter what's coming against you, you'll resurrect and overcome it. But if your love is overcome, you've been overcome. Right now, there's a war, a love war for the destiny, for your destiny, for your future. Don't let the devil conquer you with a person that offended you. If you cannot get through this person, you cannot get to your destiny. It's time to set somebody free from the past. Set somebody free from your persecutor. Set somebody free from your abuser. Set somebody free from, come on, from the cycles that you've been in and you'll never be set free until you let them go. Open the prison door. You're in it. Your enemy's in it. When you open the door, you both get out. Isn't that interesting? The crowd watched. You know what that means? 
No one stood up for him. No, he was being crucified. He did nothing wrong. The crowd watched. They were just being entertained by his pain. There wasn't one person in the crowd that just stood up. They all ridiculed him. They all watched. Maybe you feel that way. All the pain, suffering, and hurt, and people are just watching, going on with their lives, and nobody's getting involved. No one's saying nothing. No one's believing in you. This is ultimate pain, ultimate rejection, ultimate dishonor. And the leader scoffed. What does this mean? People that should know better didn't know better. People that are supposed to take care of you, be an authority over your life, they are still, they're involved in the scoffing too. You know what the word scoff really means? It means to laugh at. Could there be a group of people in your life that are actually laughing at your failure? Laughing at your struggle? They get joy seeing you suffer. And be careful that you don't become one of those people. That someone is suffering and you're clapping on the side. Internally, the more bad news you hear about them, the happier you get. You know what? how you get that way? Is you, for, you didn't forgive someone. And when you don't forgive someone, you become just like them. The ultimate power of someone hurting you is that you become just like them. And when they're giving out poison and you don't forgive, you take the poison, you take on their DNA, and you start talking like them, walking like them, thinking about them. They're in your nightmares. They're in your day. They're making decisions for you. Because when you hate someone, you're not free to make good decisions. Was she going to be there? I ain't going to my, that wedding then. They're going to be, oh, no, I don't think so. And instead of enjoying that time with your family, you're walking away from opportunities to minister to your family, to love your family because you hate someone. They're controlling even where you go. You show up to a party, you should be celebrating, and you're show, showing up trying to play defense. When I see that person, I'm going to give my two cents. And you go over there and you ruin their party. You get drunk because, you're, because right now you're trying to numb your pain, and you make a big scene. It was a birthday party for a three-year-old, and you made it all about you because you're angry. Am I, how many understand that? Is this some real stuff? Now, Jesus is saying, I want you to love, love others the way I love you. Now, that's some serious stuff because he's saying, I loved you while you were mocking me, while you were scoffing me, while you were nailing me, while you were unaware, while you were dishonoring me. I loved you. Now, go love them when they're mocking you, when they're persecuting you, when they're nailing you, when they're hating you. Love them the same way I loved you. And you're finally going to be free to be all you've been created to be. Ooh, that's rap right there. I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. Whoa, again, I'm just kidding. The crowd watched. Leader scoffed. Laughed at. It also means to boo. Jesus on the cross. Boo! It means to reject. We don't want you. I don't care what you're doing. We reject you. It all means to beat disbelief. And belittle. You're nothing. Look what they said. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he, if he is really God's Messiah, the chosen one. Prove yourself. We don't believe in you. Now what? They're gambling loud. <laughs> the crowd's just watching. No one is sticking up for him. All he's saying, if I forgave them and I love them and, I, and, and Jesus wants you to know you're them. 
You're the ones that mocked me. You're the one that persecuted me. You're the one that's unaware of what I did for you. You're the ones that, come on, you're the ones that dishonored me. And while you were doing it, I was saying, forgive them for they know not what they do because I love them and I choose to forgive them. We're going to grow up. You know why, why we got to grow up? We're getting ready for war. What I mean by that, by that is we're, it's time for us to reach some people that are difficult to reach. And if you're going to reach people that are difficult to reach, you're going to have to be able to take some of, the, some of the junk they're dishing out and still love them. There's people that have been hurt so bad that they want to hurt you because they don't want to be rejected anymore. And they're saying, I'm going to give you the worst that I got because I don't want you to reject me for me. I'm going to give you some behavior so you can reject me for my behavior. And you're going to say, no, Jesus loved me even though I wasn't behaving. And I'm going to give you some love. I'm not going to stop loving you until you're convinced that I love you and God loves you. Let's, end it. let's, let's look at this. Three lessons we can learn about how Jesus loved and forgave us. Three lessons. Number one lesson, Jesus chose to forgive us while he was in his greatest pain. His choice to forgive us was not based on his emotional or physical feelings, but on his commitment to love us. If he waited for the pain to go away, he would have never forgiven us. We must learn to forgive while the pain is present. That's tough. I'll forgive you when, the, when it doesn't hurt so much. And God says forgive them when their hurt is at the highest level. Because that's what I did for you. Forgive them the way I forgave you. I'm experiencing pain. Don't let your feelings determine your forgiveness Make a choice. I'm going to forgive you even while I'm still going through the pain. And I'm only going to do it because God loved me that way, and I'm going to choose to love you that way. That's the beginning of you being healed and the pain going away. We have to learn how to love by faith, not by feelings. I've learned this. You can't wait to love people when you feel it. I've learned this. Love them, and then you'll feel it. When the pain goes away, I'll love you. And God says, no, love them and forgive them and I'll heal your pain. Could it be that you've been in pain for years because you refuse to forgive? The pain also will show up in sicknesses that doctors can't even diagnose. It shows up as a physical pain. And you're going to the doctor and say, we can't find nothing with you. Could it be that you just need to forgive somebody? And, and if you'll forgive them, the pain will be healed and comforted. Someone's going to get healed today of pain. Someone's got a migraine here. There's pain in your body. We're going to believe right now that today's going to be your day of healing. And God says, when you forgive them, I'm going to heal you. Give God some praise. Come on, we don't wait for the pain to go away. We forgive when it's most acute. Jesus' choice to forgive while he was experiencing his greatest pain showed his great love for us. Let's look a little closer at the pain he went through while he was forgiving us. In Isaiah 55, 53, 5, it says this. But he was being punished for what we did. That's crazy. He was being punished for what, not he did, what we did. And then we're mocking him. And we're beating him. And we're nailing him. And he still chose to, chose to love us. Yes. He was crushed because of our guilt. In order for us to be forgiven, this is what he had to do. He had to take on all our sin and punishment on himself so we could be forgiven. While he was in the greatest pain, he was showing us his greatest love. He took the punishment we deserved, and this brought us peace. We were healed because of his pain. We had all wandered away like sheep. We were healed. We had gone 
our own way. And yet the Lord put all our guilt on him. He was treated badly, but he never protested. He said nothing. Like a lamb being led away to be killed. He was like a sheep that makes no sound as its wool is being cut off. He never opened his mouth to defend himself. He was taken away by force and judged unfairly. The people at this time did not even notice that he was killed. But he was put to death for the sins of his people. His pain so that we could be forgiven. He didn't try to defend himself. I, 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 I'm going to help somebody today. Stop trying to be your own attorney. Stop wasting time defending yourself. God got, has your back. The more you get involved in that conversation, the more you get involved, the more trapped you are. God knows when there's injustice. And God says, never take revenge. Leave that to me. I'll handle your case. I'll defend you. And I'll have the last word. Trust in me. Let them go. Forgive them. Move forward in your greatest pain. And the next season of your life is you'll be healed. He goes, I went through the pain so you could be healed. I went through the suffering so you could be forgiven. I love you. Love each other. I'm going through pain right now. I'm going to... If you learn this lesson, you're going to be the happiest person, most, most effective person, most powerful person you've ever been. The more we grow, the less offendable we become. Did you see what they did? Nah, I didn't see it. I'm so busy doing God's work. Whoa, whoa I mean, if I were you, I know you ain't me. Don't worry about it. You're going to let them get away with that? Now, yeah, I'm going to let them get away with it. But understand this, God has my back. I feel sorry for them. God can't even teach them a lesson because you're, in the, you're still in the way trying to teach them a lesson. You guys get that? As long as you're in the way trying to teach them a lesson through your control, your manipulation, your silence treatment, God is saying you're trying to control the situation. If you get out of the way, I can begin to talk to them, transform their lives. I could fix them. If you'll just go ahead and forgive them, get out of the driver's seat and let me drive. You're not the judge I am. Let me handle this. Excuse me. Oh, man, I feel sorry for you. God is going to get you now, it's not that God's going to get them. God's going to reach them. You guys learning? Lesson number two. Jesus chose to forgive us before we asked for forgiveness. His choice to forgive us was not based on our behavior or realization that we had done him wrong. No repentance was needed. For Jesus to extend forgiveness and reconciliation. That's really important. Are you waiting to forgive someone when they finally realize what they did wrong to you? You might be waiting for the rest of your life. Well, I won't forgive you till you acknowledge what you've done. Forget that. I'm not going to wait for you to get your act together for me to start, start being blessed. So I'm, I'm going to wait for you to, for the light bulb to turn on in your mind and you beg for forgiveness, for me to have joy, for me to have purpose, for me to fill, fill my heart with love and accomplish everything that God has for me. No, I forgive you right now whether you realize it or not, and I hope you get it one day. What is it, what are we talking about? Jesus was forgiving them while they were nail him, nailing him. Jesus was forgiving them while they were mocking him. Jesus was, was forgiving them when they were totally unaware, not realizing what they were doing. They were crucifying the Savior of the world. God was there dying for the sins of mankind was the greatest act of love. And yet they were spitting in his face while he was loving them greatly. 
Jesus is saying, don't ever let anybody stop you from being loving and kind. Don't reflect their attitude. Reflect my love that I displayed for you. All I'm asking you to do is give them what I gave you. You're going to be powerful. Well, they're going to walk all over them. They ain't walking all over. You're going to start walking on water. It's going to be different. I'm ready to go. This is how we got to roll. Before you ever do me wrong, I already forgive you. And I already know this. If we have a relationship, I might do you wrong. You might do me wrong. We might have misunderstandings. That's just life because we all got, we all got faults. Then I'm going to give you a, give you a, 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 a news, breaking news. The person you married has issues. Your boss has issues. Your kids have issues. Your mama has issues. Your daddy has issues. The president has issues. Come on, the governor has issues. Everybody you come into contact has some issues. And all you could do with all those issues is just I choose, before we even get into this relationship, I'm going to choose to forgive you whether you realize it or not. And you know what that means? You sleep good at night. We're going to go into this deeper next week, but the truth is, if you choose not to forgive, you start sleeping with demons. We'll go into that next week. Some of you guys are sleeping with demons at night. They're going to bed with you. Tuck me in. How'd you get here? Well, you chose not to forgive. I hate. You're hating. We're all together. I'm your daddy. Do not think you're going to have a blessed life if you don't even know how to forgive your enemies. Never. You want to have a powerful life, forgive your uh, The truth is, I don't have no enemies. There's people that, that maybe don't like me for whatever reason that the devil put in your head. That's, a, that's the only reason you don't like me. Some devil put some in your head. And you might not like, I don't like, I don't like his shirt. It's too loud. He should be wearing a suit and tie. That's what I respect. You go all these things you want to, but it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with your heart. And you're pegging, come on, you're picking people off all over the place. You're like a, you're like a sniper. And the reason is, is that you have not forgiven. And when you, when you have unforgiveness in your heart, you got murder in your heart. Well, I don't kill nobody. Yeah, you character assassinate everybody. You don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt. You automatically think the worst thing. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to rip me off. Because the way you think about yourself is how you think about others. It's getting quiet up in here. Yeah. So Jesus commands us to make a choice to forgive without them coming to us and asking for forgiveness there's times you got to forgive someone on the freeway that just cut you off instead of flipping them off <laughs> better learn how to drive the way we're allowed to reach you <laughs> stick right on back of your car <laughs> forgive them Stop being impatient. So they got your order wrong. Stop being mean to the waitress. Learn how to love people that do you wrong. It probably wasn't. She's, you don't even know the hell she's going through, and you're over here judging her. Maybe her son just got cancer, and you're over here fighting against her because she, didn't, she brought you milk instead of milkshake. All you got to say, baby, I've already, you got to say within yourself, I forgive her. You know why I say that? Because some of us get captured by silly nonsense. Villainizing everybody. I, I know. I, I, she just don't like me because I'm Puerto Rican. She don't even know you're Puerto Rican. I know why she did what she did. She don't like white people. She's one of those woke people. I know what she's trying to do. Get, come on. Get, stop doing all that. Just say, this is all it is. She made a mistake. Forgive her. I said, but honey, I know I ordered, I sounded the same as milk, but I forgot to, sh I, maybe I forgot to say the shake part. 
oh, my bad. I'm so sorry. I'll get you a milkshake. No problem. God bless you. As a matter of fact, we're going to get ready to eat right now. Is there anything you need prayer for? She goes, oh, my God. I'm going through so much at home. I oh, Ramabas, he's right there. Boom. Holy Spirit moving. Amen. How many want a flow of the spirit in your life? That only happens if there's a flow of love in your life. And that, be careful that you don't become a religious person in church that's super prophetic, knows the word of God, but you have no love. Because without love, you are nada, nothing. You have no gain. You have no power. There's no influence. Nothing's going to happen because you were conquered by that person that hurt you last week. Okay. Look at Mark eleven twenty five, 25, and we'll go to last lesson, lesson in just a second. Mark eleven twenty five. but when you are praying, does anybody pray? <laughs> now, that's, I mean, that's a big question, like, oh, praying. <laughs> I, I, I believe that all of us can be better at spending intentional time with the Lord in prayer. And, and, and we need to start making time where we just quiet ourselves down and have a little quiet time. By yourself, even if it's five minutes, ten minutes, say, God, this is your time to talk to me. I'll talk to you. And let's have a conversation. And, and while you're praying, God will begin to speak to you about your relationships. He'll begin to speak to you about your life. And, and if you don't do that, what you're going to do is try to keep noise, noise in your life. Noise, a whole bunch of noise and entertainment so you never get quiet enough to hear God. We love the noise because we're uneasy on the inside. And what God is saying, that uneasiness, I want you to give it to me. But we're going to have to have some quiet time so I could communicate with you. You could communicate with me. And then we'll get, you cast your cares upon me. I'll change your life. We'll do an exchange. You're going to become more like me. You're going to grow in your prayer time. In your prayer time, this is what happens, part of your prayer time. But when you're praying, forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your father in heaven will forgive your sins too really powerful truth here that god says when you pray i'm going to reveal i'm going to give you an image of relationships and if you have a grudge against anybody this is what i'm going to do i'm going to bring it up so you can forgive them right there they don't have to know that they hurt you they don't have to take responsibility for it. You're just going to forgive them right at that point so you can receive forgiveness. If you choose not to forgive them, the flow of forgiveness and love starts flowing in your life. Because understand this, when you're forgiving people, you're walking with me. When you're not forgiving people, you're walking with Satan. You make up your mind, there's forgiveness when you release it. Isn't that good that God wants us to forgive? He goes, I just want to come out. I want to bless you. Bless them. And then I'll forgive you. It's going to be good. God's already chosen to forgive us. But we just need to keep the flow going and continue to forgive others. And last lesson, we'll end it with this. Jesus chose to, chose to declare out loud his forgiveness. His choice to declare forgiveness was not based on what others were saying and doing. But, but, but what the Father asked him to do and say. The first step after we've decided to forgive someone is declare it. Jesus said this, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. You can't silently forgive someone. I'm going to teach you a lesson on forgiveness. You got to open your mouth and declare it. And this is how you forgive someone. I forgive Lisa. That's my wife for ignoring me yesterday. Forgive her. Now that's forgiveness. And it doesn't grow. And if you could do daily inventory, just forgive people every day as, as you hear from God, you're spending time with God every day, you'll never have this whole big emotional mess to give to God because every day you're weeding your heart. And today begins that weeding process. And I really believe that God can set you free to love yourself and love others, have some peace. Some of the mental distress and torment that you have in your mind, and 
and in your family, emotional pain is caused by not receiving forgiveness and giving it. Today, the good news is Jesus has already determined whether you realize it or not to forgive you. You know what that means? That you don't need to live in guilt, shame in the past anymore or try to earn forgiveness while, you were st while we were still sinning, while we walked away from him, while we wandered away, while we were hurting him, mocking him, not believing in him. He goes, I already did everything and I made a choice because I love you to forgive you. You don't have to bend my, bend my arm, twist my arm. You don't have to do nothing. Convince me. I forgive you. I love that. It's free. Are you ready to be forgiven and start over today? Because you could have that today. You could be forgiven and start over today. And when God forgives you, he forgets it. It's gone forever. So good. You know what that means? He doesn't bring it up again. He loves you. He wants the best for you. He's seeking after you. He's the one that can make you whole. And all he wants is a relationship with, a relationship with you. And if you have that relationship with him, everything he has, he wants to give you. And I know if you're trying to fix yourself, numb yourself, medicate yourself, you're going to continue going around in circles. And God's giving you an exit. You can get out of that prison of depression, anxiety, fear, self-destruction, cycles that you've been in. It could end today. It starts with receiving forgiveness. And today you might have to do what Jesus did. I forgive them for abusing me, neglecting me, being unaware of who I am. I just feel like I'm invisible. They don't even know that they're killing me. I forgive them. I forgive my wife, my ex-wife. I forgive my children. I forgive my mother. I forgive my father for not being there. I don't even know who he is. I forgive them. I forgive my boss for overlooking me and making me feel like I'm nothing at the work site. I just, I forgive them. I forgive. I just let it go. And if you do that, you could begin to love like Jesus and have the fullness of life that God has for you. Life is all about forgiving, forgiveness, receiving forgiveness and giving it. Are you ready to start a new cycle in your life of love? Powerful. Let's all stand up. I'm going to give you an opportunity today to receive forgiveness. And if you're in this room, forgiveness is an action. He knocks on your heart's door and he says, I'll forgive you. Will you receive it? There was a thief on the cross that needed forgiveness. And he told you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. When you go into paradise, will you remember me? And Jesus says, today you'll be with me. You don't twist my arm. This is why I'm here. I'm here to die for you. I came for sinners. I came for criminals. I'm a criminal. Jesus came for you. But be careful that you don't think you're self-righteous. Like, I'm, I'm, per, I'm good. I'm, no, you're not. We all need help. We all need forgiveness. Right? Jesus did not come for a whole bunch of people that, that think they're righteous. He came for a whole bunch of people that recognize, whew, I need some help. Be real. Just be real. Be real. The pain's real. The hurt's real. The, the, the guilt's real. The shame's real. The regrets are real. Be real. And all of us go through them. Oh, I'm ashamed. Bro, we're all in the same boat. How many know your pastor has issues? Hey, don't be so quick. Real. I, I know. I, I. So you guys are like, hallelujah. I know. No. That's good. Though. I want you to know that. The reason I want you to know that because I never want to come across like I got it all together. I want you to understand I'm in the same war as you. And what God has asked me to do, I can't do without his spirit, but I am willing to obey it. Sometimes I'm in pain, I got to forgive, right? That's all. We're all in the same boat. How many get that? And I've learned if I don't forgive and I, and if I don't get healed by the Lord, I start trying to medicate myself. And, and some of us have a default sin that you go to to get some escape. And, you, and the more you go to that, the emptier you feel. And you already know what your cycle is. You have pain and you go there. You have pain and you go there. You have pain and you go there. And you say, why do I keep going there? And this is the reason you're not healed yet. And when you get healed, you get set free. God wants to set you free from the prison you're in. How many need forgiveness today? You say, I want forgiveness of my sins, okay? Okay, I want forgiveness, okay? Right now, we're going to receive forgiveness. Number two, some of you need to forgive someone so you could be free. When, when you forgive them, you get out of the prison that you're in with them. 
Some of you guys are living with your abuser. You've been living in there for years. The moment they left you, divorced you, hurt you, you've been living with that pain and it's affecting who you are because they're still part of your makeup, your thinking, your attitudes, your responses. You're in a prison with them still. You can't even move on to your future because even if someone did, new came into your life, you see them as him or her. You're just like them. I could see it in you, you little devil. Because I'm not like them. Uh-huh. You, uh-huh. Oh. I'm not going to let you ever hurt me. And you're just sitting there. You can't even enjoy, receive love anymore. Because until you forgive, you can't receive love and you can't give love. So tonight, today, if you want to be forgiven of your sins, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a step. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want to place my faith in Jesus Christ. And today, God is going to forgive you. When I count to three, if you want forgiveness of your friends' sins, a new start. Come on, you want healing to come in your life, forgiveness to come in, freedom to come in your life. So, as you forgive, some of you are going to be healed. As you forgive, your addiction is going to leave you. As you forgive, the depression is going to leave you. Leave you. The, as you forgive, the fear is going to leave you. The anxiety is going to leave you. As you forgive, you're going to sense a peace come upon you. Pain. He went through pain so you could have peace. How many are ready to receive forgiveness? Raise your hand real quick. Those are, raise your hand. Come up real quick. Come up here real quick. I'm going to pray with you. <clears throat> Just come up here real quick. Come up here real quick. <clears throat> come up here real quick. I'm, we're going to pray. Come on. Let's give a hand. Come on. You're coming up here. Come up here real quick. Let's, let's have, receive forgiveness and eternal life. Come on. Get ready to repent of your sins. Like I'm done with living the way I've been living. Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. Come on. Forgive me. He'll forgive you. He'll make you whole. Come on. He'll set you free. Someone's going to get set free today. Now, number two. How many need to forgive someone? Raise your hand. Like, you know it. Like, they're on your mind. They're on your heart. Like, I don't like them. I dislike that person. And you know you dislike them because when you, you just can't stop talking about them in a negative way. It's time to forgive them so you can be free. Jesus publicly said, I forgive, forgive them for they know not what they do. Will you publicly forgive them? If you need to forgive someone, come up real quick. If you need to forgive someone, come up. Come on, this is your moment. You're going to get set free. Many of you are going to get healed right now. And there's going to be tormenting demons that are going to leave you right now. Come on, there's something holding you back. You got to come up here. You got to forgive your mama. You got to forgive your, come on, the person abused you. You got to forgive your father. You got to forgive those closest to you. You got to let it go so you can be whole and love again. Come on, God wants to do it. Anybody else? I'm going to give a few more seconds here. Come on, they're still coming. Someone's fighting right now. There's something within you that's telling you, nah, you can't forgive them. And we're going to do a simple prayer today. You're going to declare, I forgive you, and God's going to set you free. Come on. You're going to prosper now. You're going to advance now. You're going to be blessed now. Anybody else? If you need to forgive your husband, then drag him up here. You need to forgive your wife. Drag her. Both of you go come up here. If you guys, you guys are, if you need to squash something, that was started in the parking lot. Let's take it out to the parking lot. You guys already did. It's time to forgive. Okay. Let's give the Lord a hand what he's doing this morning. How many are getting this lesson? Forgive in your greatest pain. Forgive. Even if they don't ask for forgiveness, they're unaware. Forgive. Forgive. Just declare it. I forgive you. They don't need to be in this room for you to forgive them. There's people that could actually pass away that you need to forgive. You can still forgive them. It's okay. Let it go. Okay. How many learn about forgiveness and love today? Next week, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be, it's going to be the final teaching I'm going to do on love, on forgiveness this Sunday. Next Sunday, you don't want to miss it. This Wednesday, you don't want to miss that either. We're going over the subject of abortion. What does the Bible say about it? It's going to be super good. You want to know what the Bible says? We're going to find out. You're going to be surprised when God considers life, life. We're going to find that out tomorrow. I mean, Wednesday. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I realize it was my sins that nailed you to that cross. I was the one that was unaware of the pain and the suffering that my sins caused you. Thank you, Lord, for paying the price, for being punished on my behalf.
by choosing to suffer and die for me because you love me so much. Thank you for choosing to forgive me and set me free. Forgive me, Lord. Save me, Jesus. I'm done doing life my way. Make me new. And I forgive everyone that has hurt me. I want you to do this one thing. Name the person by yourself right now that forgave you and specific, I mean, that hurt you, offended you, and say, I forgive you for, and just say that, and then we're going to bless somebody in just a second. Go ahead. Say it right now. Just pray, I forgive, and name the person for, and then just say it, for neglecting me, for hurting me, for abusing me, for talking bad about me, for for not being there, for lying to me, for betraying me, for stealing from me, for all, whatever it is, forgive them. All right, say, Jesus, I am free. I've forgiven them. And I command every spirit of torment, anger, unforgiveness, hate, and bitterness, leave me now in the name of Jesus. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit and fill my heart with your love for you and for everybody. I am free. I am saved. And from this day forward, I choose to love and forgive everyone. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. We're going to pray with you, be here with you. Um, God bless you next week. Let's make it a habit. Bring your friends and family. We're going to learn more about forgiveness next week. This is how we learn. Our minds are transformed by the knowledge of God's word. We apply it and we start seeing it change. I want some prayer. I need some leaders up here to make sure we cover everybody. Let's make sure we cover them. Make sure we cover them right here. Let's make sure we cover them right here. Make sure we got them right here. Yeah. Let's make sure we got everybody. We might need another layer here. Make sure we got everybody here. God bless you, church. Remember this, if God's for you, there's no one that can come against you. Go out there and love even your enemies. You'll be free for the rest of your life.